Hello and welcome on this sunny afternoon with my 286 AT desktop computer that we're going to be looking at. Now this is a gorgeous desktop, full height, really big, five and a quarter inch floppy, three and a half inch floppy. I just have a thing for these big old desktop cases. I mean, you never know what you're going to be finding in them. So this is an early 286. So I'm really excited about this one. So moving to the front, we have a lovely case here with uh, a Computer World sticker here. We have a mentioning of an AT286. We have the keyboard lock reset button. We have a turbo button. We have a couple of LEDs, five and a quarter inch floppy drive and three and a half inch disk drive and the power button. Moving to the back, there's really not that much going on here. We have the power supply, a serial port, a game port, old style AT keyboard connector, serial parallel port and a VGA connector. Now, first thing we want to do is we want to open her up. And for that, we need to open up these two screws on each side and then the lid just comes off. So let's take a peek inside. Here we have the VGA card. We have a controller card, which is hooked up to the hard drive with two cables. So this is an MFM controller, a 16 bit ISA controller. The floppy drive and this drive aren't connected because the cable was just hanging out inside the case here, but was not connected. So let's start by unplugging the connector card, starting with the VGA card. So this is a 16-bit ISA VGA card from AHEAD with a V5000 chip. I'll need to look that one up as it's not something that I'm familiar with. It's a VGA wizard. Next card is the 16-bit ISA MFM hard drive controller card and also floppy drive controller. So the goal of this card is to hook up your MFM hard drive and the uh, two disk drives which are installed, the three and a half and the five and a quarter inch disk drive. So this is a Western Digital uh, MFM controller card that we'll be going to be looking at. And finally, we have a standard standalone uh, I.O. expansion card with a parallel serial port and some external connectors to hook up the connectors on the back. But what caught my eye immediately when I opened up the case was this hard drive here. So this is a three and a half inch MFM hard drive. You don't come across these all that often. Oftentimes you see MFM drives in old XT systems, but those are five and a quarter inch uh, hard drive. So this is a three and a half inch hard drive. So this is a Seagate ST124. This is a 20 megabyte MFM uh, hard drive. So yeah. So I really hope I'll get this one up and running because I'm really excited about this one. Here we see the defect list printed on the top of the hard drive. Overall, a really good looking hard drive. Really looking forward to it. And when I was just about to unplug the power connector, I noticed this blown capacitors. It's very typical to see these tantalum capacitor near the power supply to uh, explode or go short circuit or open circuit. So this is going to be the case here. So this will definitely need fixing. So I'm just going to be unplugging the two AT style power connectors because I want to test the power supply in isolation. So I'm just going to be disconnecting everything, hook up my multimeter and see if I get some output voltages from this power supply. So let me hook up a power cable. And hopefully when I switch on the computer, I should see five volts, but obviously this is not the case. So we see the voltage going up just a tiny bit and then it immediately drops. As Soon as I hit the power on button, the power fan spins very briefly. And when I hit the power off, the fan starts running for a couple of seconds. So definitely a power supply issue. So let's get the power supply off and take a closer look. Now I'm not really an expert on power supplies. Um, I'm not really a big fan of working on them. I typically check uh, to see if the capacitors are okay. For example, here we have the input capacitors, but there are a number of capacitors on the other side of the power supply also to regulate the lower voltages. 
At first glance they all seem to be fine, but you never know with these capacitors if they have gone bad. Sometimes there is a visual indication, but often not, so you do need to measure them to see if they are actually still good, and that's what I'm going to be doing here. Just to show you what happens when I turn on the power supply, you see the fan briefly start spinning, but when I turn it off again, the fan is spinning for about 10 seconds. Now note that this power supply isn't connected to the main board. This is a completely isolated test. So uh, what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be removing the capacitors from the PCB, from the power supply, and just going to measure them one by one. So yeah, just using your iron to loosen up the solder and, and wiggle the capacitors out of place. For example, these big ones here, they have a lot of solder on the on the back side of the PCB, so you need to warm it up for a little bit and then just try to loosen it up. Oftentimes these, these capacitors are also glued onto the PCB and oftentimes also glued to each other, so they do take a little bit of wiggling to get off, but yeah, in the end they come out yeah, relatively easily. For example, here we have a big uh, capacitor that we're going to be checking. So, here I've gone and removed all of the capacitors because, in fact, it's the only thing that I can actually check. So I'm going to be using my ESR meter to check the uh, equivalence series resistance of each capacitor to see if it's good. Normally, if the ESR value is below 1 ohms, I consider it to be good and especially if it's also capable of reading the capacitance I doubt that there is going to be something wrong with the capacitor and lord and behold every capacitor seems to check out just fine so yeah I have really no idea what the problem is with this power supply it can be one of the transformers uh, one of the IC control chips uh, I don't know so I think I'm just going to be leaving it at that with this power supply and uh, see if I can find another AT style power supply and work my way up from there. Now if we want to replace this power supply with another one we will also need to remove this power button here as it's typically always attached to the AT style power supply. So we'll need to remove the front cover to get to the screws so that we can unscrew the uh, power supply button. So I'm just going to be removing this little plastic thingy here. And here we have the power supply. Always be careful when working with these old style power supplies as the four wires that you see here are actually AC wires. So they do have some high voltage here, so definitely disconnect the computer before you uh, work on this type of stuff. I'm going to be removing the motherboard also, so I'm just going to be unhooking these little cables here for the speakers, LEDs and buttons. And now we're at a point where we can remove the motherboard from its case, which is held in place by two screws. And this should come right off like so. So let's take a closer look at the main board. Starting off with this area here where we have this barrel battery that we'll need replacing. There's a bit of corrosion but it doesn't look too bad, definitely be fixable. This however is a different story. The capacitors on the power supply where we see one that has exploded and another which is severely damaged, so both will need replacing. The main board features an AMD processor 286 running at 12 megahertz. Included also is a socket for a math co-pro. We have two BIOS ROM chips that make up the AMI BIOS, American Megatrends Incorporated, that we will see at the end of this video. The main board comes with onboard memory. Here you see a couple of chips that make up one megabyte of onboard RAM. RAM can be extended via these four SIM sockets, so we can probably upgrade the system to five megabytes easily. There are a couple of dip switches on the main board. I'll need to figure out what they are for, 
but I'm not going to be too worried about them right now. And the main chipset of this main board is coming from these G2 chips that you see here. Um, I've seen similar chips like this in my Philips 286. But let's focus on this problem area right here where we have the blown capacitor. So this is a standard AT power supply, 12 pins, six pins for each connector, where the middle two pins of each connector are the ground connection. So we'll use that as a reference here. Now the three outer pins that you see here are three 5 volt pins so it's important that they don't have continuity with ground which is the case here so let's check if there are other pins that short to ground this one's okay this is also okay but here we have the 12 volt line which is shorted to ground which is a problem so flipping the board around here we see the capacitors this one being the dead one so if we measure this one, this has gone open circuit. This is a short circuit. So let's go ahead and replace these capacitors. Luckily, I have some brand new 10 microfarad 35 volt tantalum capacitors that will do the job just fine. I'm going to be applying some extra solder here on these capacitors so that I can remove them more easily. And then if you again heat up the pads, it should come off pretty easily and it should just fall out if you wiggle it a little bit. So this is a 10 microfarad 16 volt tantalum capacitor. We'll be placing it with a similar 10 microfarad capacitor, but this one rated at 35 volts. So we'll just stick them in right here. Apply some solder and we should be good to go. So as I have given up my hopes on the original power supply that came with this PC, I found another AT power supply that should do the job. So I'm just going to test it real quick. So if I switch it on, I see a clean 5 volts here. And on the 12 volt rail, I hope to see 12 volts. So let's check that one out. So we're getting less than that, 10 volts, but yeah shouldn't be that much of an issue I guess. It's not ideal but it's better than what we had before. So final test of the day. I've got my VGA card hooked up to the main board, power supply hooked up. So let's start it up and holy moly we get to see the 286 booting up one megabyte RAM count. Obviously there are going to be some issues with the setup as probably the battery has gone dead. But after hooking up keyboard, I am able to enter the uh, CMOS utility. So everything seems to be working on this level. So in part two of this video, I'll be completing the setup, reassembling the whole thing, checking to see if the hard drive still works and getting the machine completely up and running again, hopefully. So I hope you've enjoyed this little video. And if you like it, please give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. And I hope to see you guys soon. Bye-bye.